So far, silent Hollywood has been producing some pretty terrible horror movies. Germany, on the other hand, have been doing exceptionally well. So let's see what happens when Hollywood really puts their striking visual style and haunting musical scores to good use in a great horror movie. As we learnt from The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Lon Chaney was the true juggernaut of his day. Not only was he an accomplished actor, but he was a tremendous makeup artist who pioneered the way for a lot of special effects makeup we see in films today. And straight off the bat, the makeup work he did on The Phantom of the Opera is fantastic. He creates a haunting, wraith-like image of a murderous and tormented spectre, which chills me to the very core. On the other hand, part of what made The Hunchback of Notre Dame so good was that Cheney's athletic and energetic performance gave real life to the titular character, whereas in The Phantom of the Opera, his dramatic and admittedly operatic performance makes his character quite laughable. Luckily for the film, it took the same approach that some of the other silent Hollywood-era blockbusters did, and focused on the grand set design and music, as well as having a competent director behind the camera. This is no Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Instead, it has the grandeur of the Hunchback of Notre Dame and the Thief of Baghdad, whilst also taking atmospheric and stylish lighting cues from the cinema of Weimar, Germany. The Paris Opera House is a strikingly impressive set that drips with elegance and importance, while also having the atmospheric sense of foreboding that helps to make the film stand out as a horror picture. And of course, the musical score complements this well. The encroaching sense of evil lurking behind the shadows is suggested through the music, even if there is nothing deliberately horrifying happening on screen. Similarly, the visual horror comes from what is suggested, not what is seen. Reminiscent of Nosferatu, shadows and silhouettes are used with a striking and terrifying purpose to communicate the horror to an audience and allowing their imagination to fill the blank spaces. Once this nerve-wracking tension has been created, the film drops the audience in otherwise mundane situations with a heightened sense of dread. One scene in a flooded labyrinth of tunnels beneath the opera house reminded me of Jaws, for all the right reasons. While you have the traditional Hollywood ending of a courageous hero saving the day and rescuing the girl, there is an even darker ending suggested in the final moments. In an attempt to rid the city of the Phantom once and for all, the residents of Paris band together and chase it through the streets with torches and pitchforks, in a display of mob justice highly reminiscent of the French Revolution, despite it ending a couple of centuries beforehand. Yet, as the Phantom himself is a ghost of the Revolution, it enforces the idea that the people are the true villains of the picture, and the Phantom is merely a reminder of the atrocities committed by those people in the first place. The film ends with the unnerving idea that the wrong people won, and perhaps the cycle is destined to repeat itself again in the future. For its tense and creepy atmosphere, its pioneering and horrifying makeup effects, and its understated but worrying ending, The Phantom of the Opera proves that Hollywood was capable of making horror movies in the silent era, while it may not have the same visual flair of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, or take the same route of creative adaptation as Nosferatu, it plays to its own strengths and highlights a lot of what really worked in the silent era for Hollywood. For anyone looking for an old, true thrill ride, The Phantom of the Opera is a great film to watch, and certainly comes with a recommendation. 3 out of 5 stars. Watch it.